and light. Say, I may ask, say, do you know what a circle is? <laughs> right. So, say, uh, somebody may come out, yes. So, I want a precise definition. So, they may come, say, like, it is the locus uh, or a path traced by a particle which moves uh, at a constant distance from a fixed point. Oh, right. Is that fine? Is that your final? Okay. Then, you will take a sphere, nice, perfect sphere. And then, you will take a small uh, uh, thread, say, with uh, both ends tied up. And then drop it on the sphere from above. Right? It falls on the sphere and then occupies the shape like this. Right. So just a close uh, some loop, just your thread, you just drop drop it on the sphere, it occupies that sphere. Right. And now imagine a particle is moving on that. Right? It's, it's a zigzag part, it's moving on that. Now, what is its distance from the center of the sphere? It's constant. Yeah. But is that a circle? If you imagine Let me it. say it again, you have just taken any loop of say a, a thread, a close loop, and then dropping it from the from a height on a sphere, so it falls randomly, it occupies a very random shape. But if a particle is moves on that shape on that curve, it's always at a constant distance from the center of the sphere. But the shape is not a circle. But it fits into your definition. It, see it's the path this way. But so what is what is wrong in your earlier this? Because, see, when we, whenever we speak of a circle and then try to define it, we imagine that we are on a plane. So, if you just add one place, the locus of a point in a plane, which moves in a plane so that it's distant from a fixed point, is a constant, then it's our usual circle. Okay. Then, so, we, we see circle is a very normal, ordinary, very uh, well-known shape. Any layman, anybody who because most often people say my mathematics background is very poor. But even if then if you ask them what is a circle, they definitely know what a circle is. Maybe they are not able to come out with the definition, but they know what a circle is. Right. So next thing is the next usual question is uh, see what is the length of a circle? See you can length of a square, it's easy to measure. A length of a rectangle, nice. Quadrilateral, fine. But what is the length of a circle? And almost all who have had some little bit of education, say school education, they will come out say, oh, it is just uh, uh, two pi times the radius. So what is that pi? So the pi they may say, oh, oh it is length. Of the, it is the ratio of the. Uh, uh, so when they ask you what is pi, they say it is the ratio of the circumference to the diameter. So which one is the definition? If you take pi as that, then. Uh, which circle do you have in mind? Do you have in your mind a small circle or a very big circle? If I do the experiment with a, with a small circle and a big circle, see, I may come out with different answers. Maybe I take a small circle, measure its circumference, find the ratio of its diameter, I may get some number. And do it with a large circle, I may get a different number. Then which one is your pi? Pi. So, intuitively you, use, you, you assume that whatever circle we choose, this ratio is a constant, but uh, in Euclidean geometry, do you see a proof of this anywhere? No, nowhere you see a proof of this in Euclidean geometry. So, so how do you explain what is pi? So, how do you first prove that it is the ratio is the same? Beautiful question, sir. Thank no you. way, you got to give the answer. <laughs> yeah. See, uh, so then, see, if you want an answer. Then it will uh, say, if somebody had asked me the same question and then tried to corner me, I would have asked him the back, what do you mean by length of a curve? Alright. So, yeah, so if I ask you what is the length of a curve? I, I think about a perimeter as the length. Yeah, perimeter. So you use a different word. So what is a perimeter? Perimeter, then I go to the formula. <laughs> yeah, so you maybe maybe the usual answer that I get from my you put a thread over that and exactly. then put it on a scale and then do it. Now, but then how are you sure that when you do this, putting it on scale and then putting it, say the length remains the same, right? How do you know exactly. that it's invariant? Exactly. Yeah, right. So exactly. intrinsically, you see, what is the intrinsic a natural definition or a mathematical scientific definition of length? So if you keep asking this question, then finally it comes and draws a small line segment and say, you say take a line segment, you can start any point as your origin 0, then you have two directions, this way, that way, 
and then take a convenient scale mark one two three four and then you can mark all this and then say all the rational numbers keep and then say this the length of the line segment is a uh, length you see if it fall if the, if the one end corresponds to number a and the other end corresponds to number b if b is bigger than a it is b minus a and if a is bigger than b it is a minus b so you define length only for length of a line segment straight line segment but a curve need not be composed of line segments it works for polygons for the lattice but then if it is a curve then maybe these days you see I, uh, if you look at a curve draw a curve on your uh, programmable calculator or or a computer and view it on a monitor and then zoom it zoom it zoom it then it's all bits yeah, right so bits of straight lines so the curve is made of several bits of straight lines maybe you can say yeah, add all this then it's, it then needs a how so what is the zoom you use so in the length it will depend on the zoom so it, it depends on so it's it's an approximation you are getting for the length of the curve so what exactly is the length of the curve so then how do you add I, addition is actually when you say add use a plus symbol what is that so the natural answer you get oh it's a binary operation which you get which it was taught to us even in your first standard or something so what is that binary operation okay. so what is a binary operation see it adds two numbers right so it can add only two numbers so how do you add three numbers or oh, then you say add take any two of them add that one and then add the third number it's fortunate we are fortunate that a plus b plus c is same as a plus b plus c in whatever way you do it and then in whatever order we do it we are very fortunate so this addition works so if i know how to add two numbers i know how to add a three therefore four or five or any finitely many numbers but then when you take a curve and then make it into bits if you make it into bits of say finitely many two three four ten fifteen maybe you can add there's going to be large larger than any number that you can think of like makes it larger and larger and larger if you want me to use the word infinity yes infinite number of bits so i are adding infinite number of numbers but your addition is only a binary operation you can add only two so how do i am i going to add infinitely many numbers so if i put infinitely many numbers on your table and then ask you to add to find the sum of this maybe if i had put 10 say you can add the 10 numbers if i put 20 yes in whatever order you like you can choose the 20 in or in any order you like and then add but if i put some infinitely many and then ask you to add you know in which order you pick you know, keep on doing it imagine that you are so quick but then each addition takes some time like some positive time so our lifetime may not be enough to the add infinitely many Take however care. quick you are Take there must be some way of doing it no? so some way of doing it so people came out like oh there is a pattern like for example if i have a series like uh, 1 plus r plus r square plus r cube etc so some simple uh, things in 1 plus r oh 1 plus r plus r r square it is 1 minus r cube by 1 minus r 1 minus r cube say divided by 1 minus r so if it is 1 minus up to 1 plus r plus r power n minus 1 it is a ratio 1 minus r to the n by 1 minus r so both can be calculated so i add so this series can be added to 10 15 20 200 2000 so how big can let me ask you see how big you can take so give me a big number yeah you give me some big number oh, 10 million 10 million okay 10 million is definitely big but imagine that you are uh, you are the uh, uh, treasurer of this county or something since it's Malabar area Tinagar area is 10 million enough for uh, one week maybe or we have to talk about billions and billions. zillions <laughs> right so billions and zillions imagine that it's your uh, uh, Obama or somebody is a number one in US and you are budgeting US so trillions. Trillions, right, <laughs> trillions not enough so you are always thinking and adding zeros no? so you are going very slowly, slowly no. let me see see how big you are thinking so, let, so if you had told me say power 2 power 10, 10. or 2 power 20, 20 2 power a million then it, it exponential very fast that's that's what it mean by exponential growth right then it grows very fast right mm -hmm. so like the, uh, however big n is one minus r to the n can be computed by one minus r so this we call a geometric series and add up the n terms it does a nice formula and then see as n goes to infinity as n becomes larger and larger this one minus r power n by one minus r does it 
uh, attain to something definite? Does it have some, does it come closer and closer to some de definite number? Then what is that R? That is the ratio 1 plus R plus R square. No? So that ratio can be either less, let me assume it is positive. Uh, it can be either less than 1, equal to 1 or bigger than 1. See, if it is equal to 1, you know, like, like you are adding 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 several times, naturally the, it blows up. See, it's infinity. So if it is less than 1, then as n increases, r to the n diminishes okay. and it tends to 0. It's almost negligible. Negligible. So 1 minus r power n, the numerator is simply 1. So when n tends to infinity, it is simply 1. Yes. So the sum of the geometry is 1 over 1 minus r. If the r is bigger than 1, definitely it is say it is bigger than the series 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is even that is infinity so r bigger than 1 it's definitely so geometric series you can add an infinite series by this limiting, limiting process so e require from algebra we have to go to we require a different tool like a limiting concept so that is why technically it is from algebra we enter analysis right mathematically analysis any anything that requires uh, idea of limits then it becomes analysis. So you require idea of limits to add infinity many numbers. So yes. naturally you require something. Even even that, see, you take the first number, second number, third number, fourth number. That means you can enumerate, right? It's some exactly. sort of countable infinity. Countable infinity. But there are some infinite things which you cannot like sequence it like first, second, third, fourth, etc. For no example, if we take all points between zero and one, you cannot say first point, second point, third point, fourth point, it's, it's uncountable. Uncountable. So, for example, for every t between 0 and 1, I give you a number and call it ft, right? For every t between 0 and 1, I give you a number, call it ft and ask you to add all these numbers, all these fts. Uh, see, it's definitely infinite collection. Infinite collection. Uh, but yeah. then, which one you start with? It's open interval 0 to 1. <laughs> what is the first number greater than 0? No way. <laughs> no way. What is the last number less than 1 again? That's See, so wherever you start, there are you are leaving each other. Another so, in which order? So, it requires a different kind of addition. addition. Right? Exactly. But then, your, your new addition that you are going to define for some of these uncountably many things should be consistent with finite addition and countable addition. So, people, let see, who have had some. Uh, Say class, say education, say some uh, um, exposure to calculus. See, if I ask this question to them, they will simply say integrate. Integrate FT between zero and one. What is that integration? That integration is to say some way, of, some definite way of additive, adding all these uncountable many things. As T goes from zero to one, adding all these FTs in a particular manner consistent with your finite addition. And Riemann came out with some nice manner, way of doing it. We call it Riemann integration. If you come out with some nice way of doing it, like uh, say uh, addition which is consistent with our adding two numbers or ten numbers or fifteen or twenty or uh, finitely many or countably many, then it's your own integration. Yeah, exactly. We right? have a new name so, could be added yeah, there. So, <laughs> so that is how new integrations have come up. So uh, the length of a curve requires some integration, right? Some addition. So if you want to prove that result, it can be done. But you require a, a tool, a limiting concept. Which we'll so, take up yeah. in the next video. Yes. Thanks a lot, Bye. Professor. This 10 minutes is golden minutes of saying why we need analysis. Where the normal mathematics algebra stops, where the analysis takes over. This is Professor Ranget Ramanji. Yeah, uh, Ranganathan. Uh, Ranganathan ji. And, uh, see, well, uh, I'll see, today we speak of the many people, many computer scientists may say that, oh, discrete mathematics is enough. No, discrete mathematics has its own limitations. We require continuum mathematics. Continuum, continuum mathematics. Right. Continuum is, is, is essential. Yeah. Even to speak of length of a circle, see, we cannot do it without the idea of limits. That is the power of analysis. Yes. This is amazing, Professor. We watch out for more series of video, I mean, videos on continuous mathematics from the Ranganathan Professor. Okay.